Greetings and salutations, Geonos. Today I want to talk to you about these mines up in behind Brisbane, up in the hills at Mount Nebo and Camp Mountain. I'm going to show you some work of some great Brisbane YouTubers who've gone right through these mines. It's not the mines. If you want to see the mines, go and watch their videos. I'll give you links. I want to talk to you about how these mines were dug and the way the men did it. So hang in there. This will take you somewhere unexpected. Here we go. Here's one mine shaft. This is a bit more filled up, however. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Gee, that's that's about 15 meters down. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's a, that's a big drop down there. So a grunt didn't put a uh, spoken track on this one, but I'll do it for him. You can see the quartz in the walls, particularly on the right hand wall there, there's quite a big quartz vein, but as you can see, it's pinching out, it's gone. So they've dug down here and gone, that's it. And when I show you how they dug this tunnel, you'll understand why. So anyway, that's a really nice video, really nice video. I like it, I like this shot, looking back out again with the bats in the way. Anyway, let's move on and uh, let's hear from Cam. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a look at this bad boy. That is a big hole. Very big hole. Not quite sure whether you can get a decent sort of look at this. But Well, folks, let me introduce you to the Perseverance Goldfield again. And the, most of the mines in this area are of similar age. Uh, they reckon there was some there in the 1850s. There was certainly none in the 1840s. But by 1870, it was on. And uh, it was pretty much all gone by the turn of the century. So what we're looking at today is, well, how did they dig these mines? Well, I suppose the first question is, why did they dig these mines? Well, Queensland was broke and they needed some of this shiny stuff. And they were paying people to go out and find it. And they were finding it, and they did find Gimpy, which was huge. So yeah, um, but these are the guys. It was not really the lap of luxury. They weren't living in air-conditioned diners, having a uh, French chef cook them lunch every day. That's the ugliest dog I've ever seen. Anyway, these guys, this is a coal mine, of course, but these are Cousin Jack's. They came from Cornwall and they called them Cousin Jack's Cornish Miners. And uh, first of all, they dug like this, with a pick and a shovel that they dug with a pick. And that's really hard. Let's have a look at that just briefly. So we weren't going to get too far through this hard rock and so still from uh, Grunt's video, you can see the pick marks in the wall. So there was definitely a pick used here. We had to find a better way. And they did. So it all starts with a piece of tool steel and a hammer. And it's called jacking. And that's a single jack there where one bloke gets a hammer and belts that steel into the rock. This is called double jacking where two or more fellas, one guy holds it, the guy holding it's called the shaker, the guy hitting it's called the drill, and you can do it upwards if you have to. I cannot imagine how hard that must be if you want to tunnel up to this stuff. And what you'd do is you'd uh, jack a hole into the rock as deep as you needed it, uh, or downwards if you want it like this, and uh, I'd trust those blokes with that hammer. You really would, because you know, don't think you'd get hit in the wrist too many times with a sledgehammer. Here they are again, swinging it in. And of course, what do they do? Well, uh, they would fill this with an explosive. But in 1840, 1850, 1860, 1870, the only explosive they had is 
black power. So we'll look at that, but let's have a look how far we took Jackie. This is in the United States, of course, of course. And this is a double jacking competition. And not that long ago, they still do this. But if you have a look at the uh, white burst of powder that comes out of it, um, yeah, that's silica dust. I don't know that you should be breathing that anymore. Yeah, ever. Here's some more blokes doing it. Look at the little jet of silica dust coming out of there every time it hits it. So what happens? The shaker has a, has a go. He's having a rest, trusting the guy implicitly. And then they hit a mark and then they change over. The shaker grabs on and the other guy has a go and they just swap backwards and forwards until they've got it done. Which is, you know, hard work. Have to think about those tunnels. You need some of this. This is blasting powder. It's essentially black powder. It does have a few other herbs and spices in it. Um, you need a bit of that in a whole uh, powder keg. Okay, what a powder keg. And uh, this is what it looks like, basically. Looks like black salt. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a picture of what happens when you uh, light the blue touch paper and retire to a safe distance. So it's pretty obvious, if you want to dig holes like this, for a rock like this, black powder is going to take a really long time. So, yeah, fortunately, something better came along. So this little party balloon doggy is called nitroglycerin, also called glycerol trinitrate. Same stuff. Um, amazing bit of gear. It's actually a very powerful medicine as well. Uh, in small quantities, invented by this guy, a bloke called Asino Sobrero, in 1847. He hated it. He said it's too dangerous, it's unstable, and it's going to kill a lot of people. Well, it actually has saved a lot of people's lives. Uh, I had chest pains once, and they gave me a nitro tablet. Didn't do any good because it turned out it was indigestion, but anyway, the thought was there. Um, and it saved a lot of people's lives with uh, angina and other heart disease, but it has a terrible party trick. That's a drop of it. Even slowed down more than 500 times. It is a very, very dangerous little ombre and it's extremely unstable. If you flick this container with your finger, it would probably be the last thing you ever did. And you of course need people around it that are very responsible and know how to handle it. So of course the mining industry is definitely not in it. So there was a problem. We need to find a way to make this safe. Now Sobrero had invented nitroglycerin in 1847, but in nearly 20 years, no one could handle it. Alfred worked out a way. In 1866, he invented dynamite. Mixed it with some diatomaceous earth, made it stable, made it safer to handle. Not to manufacture, but to handle. And you could throw this in a fire and it would just burn. Gelignite he also invented, which was more powerful and it of course was even more safe. He also invented the detonators to set it off. But when he died, yeah, he wasn't particularly well celebrated. You know, he was a pretty disturbed individual. Spent most of his life in court suing people for infringing his patents. But he did leave this, and it has done some good, there's no question of that, so... Uh, no, still an angel of death in my books, but anyway, let's have a look and see what happened to jacking. So folks, what we've got here is a uh, pneumatic drill. Uh, these were invented in the late 1860s, 1870s, so not used here. And uh, what you see, that leg going to the ground is called a jack leg and there's compressed air in there and he's controlling the compressed air in the leg and the rotation of the drill and uh, as you can see he can really knock some holes beats Beltman with a couple of uh, hammers and a piece of steel so yeah um, have you now realized there's a lot of jack in this stuff like where jackhammer gets its name from 
It's all to do with the Cornish mining heritage in the mining industry. Cousin Jack's. So to tie it all together folks, there was no way blokes like this were using dynamite or pneumatic drills or gelignite. They were using jacking and they were using black powder. And those mines you saw at the beginning of this video were almost certainly dug mainly with manual labour, jacking and black powder. Maybe later on, let's tie that timeline together. So. Our old mate, um, Nobel, he only invented dynamite in 1866. Invented. And, you know, they didn't just quickly chuck it in DHL and send it over to Australia. It probably took 10 years to get here. This guy was paranoid about his patents. He wouldn't have sent it anywhere unless he had patent protection. That could have been longer. Well, that's, you know, the 1880s. These mines are all open by then. They're going. So yeah, I don't think there was any dynamite used in those mines. Maybe the ones on Mount Cooper, they were quite a bit later. But again, the stuff was expensive too, you know. These guys weren't exactly overloaded with cash. Um, so yeah, drill steels, sledgehammers, and you do find old hammers in those mine hammerheads. And you find picks, there's all old picks, and they're worn down. Because there was always a blacksmith somewhere, because those drill steels needed sharpening. There was usually a forge somewhere outside, or if it was a long mine, there'd be one in the mine and they just be constantly sharpening those drill steels. Well folks, don't forget to check out Cam Carter's Cam's Adventures and Adventures with Grunt. And of course, uh, Gel, John over at Gel Builder and uh, Off Track Explorer and uh, uh, Gel Reviews. You gotta watch those, they're fun. Anyway, these are great Brisbane YouTubers that go out, walk all over the countryside, take some awesome videos. Links are always uh, below in the description. I strongly suggest you uh, check these people out they're good bikes well there we go folks that's another week uh, this is an interesting video I just thought of it and I thought you know we always think of this modern mining but that wasn't modern mining you know those diggers did it hard really hard anyway thanks to all the new subscribers I see you and the comments you're leaving I really enjoy thank you Keep rocking. T-Rock's out.